Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a Geek Network special interview. As always, I am your host, Keith, and I am joined by one co-host tonight, and I'll introduce him in just a moment. But first, I want to welcome our special guest, a writer of Finger Guns, Justin Justin Richards. I, had, I panicked for a moment and thought your name was something else. Oh, oh my God. It. It's right in front of me. <laughs> Justin Richards. How's it going? Hey, man. I had, a, I had a friend growing up named Justin Williams. And for a moment, I was like, Williams. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. That's okay. We're going we're gonna to go. We're not going to take a take two. We do it live here. So, <laughs> uh, so great. Uh, thank you for joining us. Definitely for the first time ever. Yeah, this is definitely. certainly the first time we've talked to you. And nothing has ever gone wrong in previous interviews. So I'm glad to hear from you. So um, now, as we have not talked about before at geek network our series of shows are based on all forms of media that we consume Uh, most of our staff got to know each other simply by talking about what we like Um, so in the spirit of our first show binge watching i want to know what have you been watching in this time of course um lots of stuff (laughs) um uh, so i've 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 joined the the cult and watched no. Tiger King. No, <laughs> oh, it's, that's it's, a high yeah. hope for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's an interesting show for sure. Um, I've been watching that that show Devs on Hulu. Have you seen that? I really want to. Uh, the cast is incredible. Yeah, it is. So. It's it's been really good. It's one of those slow burns like it really really likes to not tell you anything that's going on but <laughs> it's beautifully shot well cast well acted and like the mystery is good so i've been yeah. enjoying that um i gotta see invisible man finally oh nice which i really like that uh val and i watched that together online <laughs> um and i've been re-watching some community on netflix Excellent. Yeah, yeah love that's it. a podcast favorite. We're trying to get Thomas to watch it because he's never seen it. Oh, lucky! I know, it's so good. Yeah, you should convince him. <laughs> I'll tell him actually. So <laughs> yeah, say I give my blessing. <laughs> uh, we've been watching um, The Outsider on HBO. Oh, nice! I've been yeah. meaning to. I just haven't gotten around to that one. If you like Stephen King, you'll probably like this. Weird. Um, it's really good. Um, I'm it's, not the biggest Stephen King fan. It's written very Stephen King. At least like dialogue wise, that's what I kind of I, I came across. Yeah. A lot of the camera work to me is very David Fincher. Okay. Yes. Um, which we're going to talk about because we're going to do a special episode about the series. That's why I'm kind of marathoning it. Nice. And yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I'd recommend that, especially Cynthia Revo is absolutely killer in that show. So. Well, yeah, awesome. Okay, well, for our next question, I'll kick it over to our co-host, uh, Josue. Oh, yes. So, in the spirit of uh, Respawn, ready, uh, any video games you've been playing or tabletops? Um, not tabletops, but I, I've joined the other cult of playing Animal Crossing. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I've uh, been replaying um, Devil May Cry 3. Ooh, and, nice. And um, uh, <laughs> this one... Like a lot of people will either have no idea what I'm talking about or will be huge fans of this. Have you ever heard of Night Trap before? Night Trap? No. no. Actually. So it's actually like kind of a big historical game in a sense. It's I'm not gonna tell you it's a great game, but uh it's a special game that holds a good place in history that like is was one of the big video games that they used in the Congress uh like sessions that led to like the video game rating system being uh, implemented. Oh, the SRB. Yeah. Um, Is it's from 92? This, yeah. It's this crazy uh, FMV video game that, so it's all pre recorded video of it's like a mansion that you have control of like a certain number of uh, security cameras that can watch everything that's going on in the mansion, but you can only watch one at a time. And like, there's these teenagers in the house and you have to try to protect them from these weird, like vampire uh, ninja characters. I forget what they're called. I'm going to, I'm going to sound like I've never played the game. (laughs) Uh, but yeah, like they're these weird little, like, like they're just dudes dressed in black walking around with like these weird, horribly made, uh, like, uh, 
I don't even know how to describe it. It's like these things that wrap around your neck and then they suck the blood out of you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's like there's traps throughout the house that like you have to try to trap those people before like the kids can die. And so like, there's like a bunch of different ways that it can go. And like, you can, you know, watch different rooms at different times throughout it. So it's like a highly replayable game. It's pretty cool. And it came out on switch finally. Oh, so uh, I picked it up. Yeah. Well, fuck yeah. I actually just picked up a few games on, on the Switch, too, because they're super cheap. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of good sales going on right now. Yes. Um, one of my personal favorites, Golf Story. If you haven't played it, you should definitely do it. <laughs> it's I, a good RPG. I've heard of it, and it looks good. I just haven't gotten around to playing it yet. Yeah, he finally yeah. wore me down. I bought it the other day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. We'll talk about it on Respawn. That's why. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I'm looking at this game now, Night Trap. It looks like it was released on pretty much everything now. Switch, mm-hmm. PlayStation, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah. it's it's everything definitely a, a niche game, but if you like it, you'll really like it. <laughs> and it is, I a, like I said, it's a, it's a piece of history. So, Yeah, gotcha. it's, cool. it's got a lot of history towards behind it, like a great cult following. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, for the next one, my show, Infinite Playlist. Anything you've been playing uh, in the background? Um, I've been going back and listening to some Jet. Uh, yes. Uh, I really like using their album uh, Shine On to like clean up the house and stuff. I don't know, it's just a good album. Like I can listen yeah. to every song on that album. Yeah, they're definitely much more than just Are You Gonna Be My Girl. Yes, way more than that. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think that was their best hit. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Rollover DJ. Yeah, I love that song. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I like the "She's a Genius" or "That Girl Is a Genius." That's a good one. Mm-hmm. And um, "Cold Hard Bitch" is another good one. Cold Hard oh, Bitch yeah. is great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I went back and was listening to some Rammstein, which Ooh. I hadn't listened to in like 15 years. Any album in particular? <laughs> Um, my favorite of theirs is Mother, so that's pretty okay. cool. or, well, Mutter, which yeah. is German for Mother. <laughs> um, and then today, uh, I threw on some classic Metallica. Oh, fuck yeah. Well, nice. Um, so, uh, for our weekly theme, this week's is, um, musician actors. Any way that comes to your mind? Uh, that is an interesting one. Uh, I would say... I guess, yeah, the only one that immediately comes to mind is is Justin Timberlake. (laughs) Yes. I think that was for sure going to go on there, regardless of who was going to pick it. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And And then specific song? Uh, I I seriously can only think of uh, Sexy Back. Yeah, Bring Sexy Back. It's a great song, dude. Like, it's, it's it's amazing. So I remember I w- in college when I worked for the paper and I'm going to date myself when I say this, um, I worked for the college paper and I was a music movie critic. And I, I remember I reviewed his first album. Oh yeah. And I, I remember, cause I was like a metalhead kid at the time and they're like, you have to review everything, not just, you know, what you want. I'm like, all right. <laughs> and so I reviewed that. I'm like, wow. That, I think that was my first pop awakening actually. Now I think about it. I was like, this album's actually really good. <laughs> like, so, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Now you had also mentioned you might you thought about a, a cover better than the original. Can we know? Yeah, it? I, uh, it's like so. I told you I was listening to some Metallica, and I do like their covers. Mm-hmm. Um, and so one that I definitely think is better than the original is "Turn the Page." Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Although my roommate would kill you because he's the biggest Bob Seger fan ever. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell him I said "whiskey in the jar" or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, thank awesome. you. Yeah, no worries. All right, and of course, our last question is based on the show I host every week. Uh, we have issues where we're talking about books, comic books, and everything like that. Um, and I just want to know, have you been reading anything with all this time? Um, I've been slowly working my way through Something is Killing the Children. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, good. it's really good. I think I'm on issue four. Am I on three or four? Mm-hmm. It's really good. It's um, so fucking good. And I read, I, it's not a long read, but I, I got my hands on um, Nosferatu by uh, Marie Anger, mm-hmm. who, like, she's just got a really, really, really cool art style that I 
you know, I'll read anything that, that, uh, that she does. So yeah, that nice. was like a one afternoon read, like, but it was, it was worth it. It was cool. Let's see. Awesome. I'm adding that to my list while we're talking. So, <laughs> no um, way. perfect. Uh, awesome. Yeah. One thing we've been doing, and I kind of want to get your feet about, back about this. We don't have a lot of new comics to talk about, so we've been breaking into our old graphic novels, mm -hmm. reviewing older stuff. But one thing we decided to do is the entire group is going to read the same thing. Nice. And uh, we wanted to kick it with something that everybody could have access to. And since we have Marvel Unlimited, we're doing the we're doing the Age of Apocalypse in four chunks. Okay. I don't know if you read that. Um, oh, God, for forever ago i, I yeah I read it, so yeah <laughs> yeah because me and host we have read it but the others haven't so it'd be an interesting conversation so totally. yeah. yeah that's what we've been reading uh mostly it's been kind of a it's it's been a weird couple episodes let's just put it that way oh, yeah. Re reviewing older graphic novels uh so but let's start talking about what we're here for um Obviously, we're welcoming you here, and we're very happy to have you. We want to talk, just get straight into it, about your book, uh, Finger Guns. Yeah, yes. let's do it. Yeah, so uh, I want to go ahead and start a bit before we talk about the book itself. Um, if we can kind of talk about how it came to be, um, how you and Val might have, uh, like, did you know each other beforehand? Were you hooked up by Vault or mm -hmm. a mutual acquaintance? How did that all come to be? Yeah, um, so Finger Guns uh, originated from a dream that I had um, mm -hmm. where I was kind of in first, like it was, I was in the dream. I was one of the kids that had the powers that you see in the book um, to affect emotions using finger guns. And um, so, yeah, like I woke up and wrote, wrote down, thought about it for a while and was having a hard time think, you know, thinking of what I wanted to do with it. And um, a friend of mine, Sabs Cooper, helped me kind of get out of that rut and we co-wrote for a while and she left the project um, and then I pitched it to Vault uh, without an artist and I met Val uh, through a, an acquaintance of ours named Christoph Borgax who's a good uh, comic writer he's got some good stuff coming particularly mm -hmm. I would say watch out for uh, volume from Scout Comics mm -hmm. he's doing that with Skylar Patridge and like it just it looks so rad it's uh, you know punk punk rock aesthetic uh revolutionizing against you know the man keeping us down it's like a world without music kind of thing anyway uh oh, that's yeah cool. I i'm looking Val, at it right now that looks really awesome right skylar's got a great artist too uh but so i met christoph and then yeah he introduced me to val when i was looking for a colorist on a personal project of mine and so I hired Val and then I started looking through his portfolio and really liked what I saw. And so I brought him to Adrian and, uh, yeah, Adrian gave him a little, little test to have him design our characters and he killed it. So we went with, with Val. Nice. nice. And that's, that's kind of one of the things, um, that I really wanted to kind of focus on a little bit early on is, uh, we have a, it's safe to say a minor obsession with vault comics on our show. <laughs> oh, <sorry>. um, <laughs> so, um, and I know Sir Thomas latched onto him really, uh, closely because he is a new comic book reader and they're really relatively new companies. So it's not mm -hmm. hard for him to dive in deep, you know, yeah. it's kind of hard to dive in deep with the fantastic four, for instance. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, Bit of a difference. But yeah. So what's, what's it like working with Vault? I mean, it seems like a really rewarding, creative atmosphere. It is. Um, Vault, those guys are great. Like, they love comics as much as you and I do. Uh, maybe even more. They've, they're just super passionate, and it shows in their work, and it shows in their commitment to bringing out the best in every book that they're put, putting their hands on. So it's been really great. Adrian's a fantastic editor. Uh, he works with you hand in hand, you know, we talk on the phone, uh, do a lot of emails back and forth. So like, it's just been pretty easy, really. Um, not much more to say, I guess. Just, yeah. <laughs> I got you. Um, and yeah, so uh, we're, we're really big fans of it. And um, we're discovering a lot of creators we really enjoy through it as well, uh, through uh, Vault. Now, um, I did want to also, before we get into the book itself, talk to you about the Creators for Comics thing. Yeah. Um, that is trending. Um, most 
most of the things I saw are actually expiring tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, the the auctions and such. Uh, for those who don't know, Creators for Comics is uh, all these comic book creators coming together, uh, raising money uh, to support the basically the struggling comic book industry at the moment. Um, and uh, you can see some incredible stuff out there, and you are contributing to this as well. And I was yeah. hoping you could tell our listeners a little bit about it, even though it might be over by the time this we have this conversation. It'd be nice for them to hear about it. Totally. Um, yeah. My so I'm teaming up with Val. Um, the artists of finger guns to do we're doing one together where we're offering um, one of our exclusive covers that was going to be the exclusive for Emerald city comic con. Oh yeah. Um, I have one of those. Nice. Yeah. They're great. Uh, they're the, they're RC cover, which was done by Jen Heckman, but they're done with a cool glitter spot finish on it. Mm -hmm. um, they're really, really cool. Um, there's only, about 500 of them in existence oh, shit. and you know they didn't get to be at a con so i don't even know how many of them actually sold from vault because they did sell them direct on their website but i don't know <laughs> if they sold out or or uh, what but it, um yeah I know so one anyway. person that has one <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know i know thomas has one as well <laughs> um but yeah, so we're offering one of those uh, signed by both Val and I, which will be literally the first, the first comic that him and I have both signed together. So, Bug. whoever wins that, it gets to be the first helps. one to have both of our signatures on our book. That's pretty cool. Well, yeah. That would be a really good one to have. And the cover is great because it's—I it, believe it's the wraparound cover mm -hmm. in yeah, addition to having the glitter on it. So, because um, I have the I have the standard wraparound, but it's gorgeous like like I yeah love this cover. jen just killed it on that they are such a good artist and i i'm so like i didn't even know that that variant was happening and then they got announced and i was like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's awesome um i was curious did you um have you seen any other things uh on the creators for comics that jumped at you that you're like, Oh, I wish I could get that. Cause we, our last show, we actually basically talked about careers for comics for about 30 minutes and <laughs> just read stuff we wanted. basically. So. Totally. Um, I think one of my favorites is uh, Chip Zdarsky's offering, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, for those that don't know who are listening, uh, he will uh, write you your own personal uh, like sexy time like fan <laughs> fanfic erotica. story yeah erotica yeah yeah uh and he'll read it to you uh, live over skype like that's just that's gonna be fun for whoever gets that i think it was really expensive at this point yeah i remember one guy bid for 2069 and i was like I no one else did just let him win <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's still like that's like the longest i really don't know if somebody tried to outbid that because but that is perfect yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, that's been a good one. Or, um, uh, like, it's not for me, but I think it's a really cool one. Uh, Liana Kangas and uh, Danny. Uh, I always forget their name. I'm bad with names. Hmm. Um, their handle is at Wear Dogs. Uh, they did the Queen of Bad Dreams for Vault. Um, oh. Uh, they don't use their last name on Twitter a lot. Like right now, it's Danny Gay Delorean, so <laughs> <laughs> which is just amazing. Uh, but anyway, the two of them are like high end of fashion and uh, makeup, and so they're offering like um like a get ready with us makeup session with somebody. Oh fuck yeah! Uh, yeah, I thought that was That's a really creative, neat idea. That's actually one of the upcoming uh, musical themes for my show. Whenever we get to it, nice. <laughs> um one that uh or two real quick that jumped out at me that i thought were amazing uh me and Josue talked about them uh charles soul mm -hmm. is writing an original oh. uh, kylo ren slash ben kenobi short story and he will share it only with the winner of it and if the winner doesn't want it shared no one else will ever see it whoa <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what me and him we're like oh we want that so bad that would be rad and then the other one was, who was in the dinner party, Josue? Oh, the Bendis, Kelly Sue, and Matt Fraction? 
yeah, a, a yeah. dinner party with the three of them. We because I love I love me some Matt Fraction, Kelly Sue, and uh, Ben is great Matt, too. So. Yeah, totally. That'd be great too. So I did awesome. see that one and was like, I wish I could bid. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, we, we were going through, and I was like, Oh, I'm gonna bid on this. Nope, no, I'm, I just saw the first bid, and I'm not gonna bid on this one. So. <laughs> yep, exactly. But it's awesome because we're raising a bunch of money, so that's really cool. Yeah. Totally. That's yep. been like the one like. I haven't bid on anything because by the time I found everything, it's already bid like, you know, well over a hundred dollars or $500 exactly. or what have you. Uh, yeah. which case I exactly like what you were saying. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, that sucks. But then I'm like, well, that's good. Right. <laughs> that's good. But yeah. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm actually, uh, I'm pretty excited with the way it's going. And, uh, I, I I've been trying to check out the, um, lesser known creators too. Which I would recommend our listeners to do. Um, should this continue, I don't know if this is going to be in tomorrow, you know, or how often it's going to keep happening. But yeah, look out for those lesser known creators. You could probably find a really killer deal on something really cool that you could get into. So yeah, I've seen some cool like pack like packages of everything that a le- like a slightly smaller creator has ever mm-hmm. done. Uh, so like you can get like their entire you know catalog and get get it for you know. I think the bid was at like 60 something bucks, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it's like and five like, traits. <laughs> there's a couple like novelists, like giving signed copies of their novels and they're only at like $40. I'm like, I'll bid on that. Like, <laughs> that sounds awesome. So man, right uh, now at a uh, cosmic monkey, they found uh, the, the, the entire set of ex machina and the five specials and they're selling it for like a hundred bucks. Oh, in single issues, like not, not trades. Nice. That's a good okay. shot, too. That's, yeah. that's great, dude. <laughs> All right. And so, uh, again, uh, relating to this, uh, you did bring up, and I wanted to give you a chance to talk about the Comics Industry Collective. Yeah. So, uh, the Comics Industry Collective, I am a member of, uh, which, if you haven't heard of it, uh, is a group of prof- comic book professionals uh, who we're, we're trying to do our best to help save retailers right now. So we've we've gone and made a map which currently hosts over 600 shops, mm-hmm. um, where you, as a reader or a potential reader, can type in your zip code and see what shops near you are offering what kind of services uh, during the quarantine. Uh, so, like you know, if they are doing delivery or curbside pickup, or if they have a an online store, like we have that information. So just trying to kind of like connect shops and and uh potential buyers or customers and uh you know we're not stopping there we're working on um uh some kind of i don't want to say lessons but just helping shops figure out how to get online how to make their own website their own store you know use facebook to make a store that kind of stuff because uh like a lot of shops you know that we want to include on our map we you know they don't have an online presence Mm -hmm. so it's hard to connect with them both for us and for their customers so like that's kind of and unfortunately it's not even the future it's the present right now where you kind of need to be online to be continuing any kind of sales so right yeah we're just doing our best to try and help shops stay open because they're the lifeblood of our industry right it's just it's just it's so awkward right now because like there's there wasn't really a need for that for the substitute. Like if you wanted to go pick up comics, like you would go to the store because there was nothing better than that feeling of just like going inside and picking up your comics. And now mm-hmm. it's just like, yeah, I can imagine like so many stores, like not really having one, not really having a website like beforehand because shit, nobody saw shit coming. Right. And yeah, now they're, you know, seemingly kind of dead in the water. Like you can't have anybody come into the shop. You got to have a way to communicate. So yeah. Um, hopefully, Another- uh, I hope the word keeps spreading on it so that we can help them do that. Yeah. No, yeah a definitely. shop up here, Books with Pictures, like has been killing it mm-hmm. with like how they're running their online service, uh, service. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that shop. Um, and I'm actually, I'm. they opened a sister store in Eugene. Mm-hmm. Uh, different owner, but, you know, same franchise. And uh, I've gone, they just opened like right before shit hit the fan. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which just that's timing is so bad. And I've seen a a number of shops like that actually. So it sucks. 
And yeah, I'm trying to work with them to do some online stuff, send them some copies of finger guns to, and sign them, you know, so they kind of have something they can auction off or do whatever they want with, you know. Yeah, cool. definitely. All right. Well, definitely check that out, guys. Um, the website was 28 pages later. Right? Yeah. 28 pages later dot com. Great. And then um, on there, there's a place there where you can uh, provide the information for your local shops there. Uh, specifically, if it's a big open area where you don't see any shops, you know, listed on there, you can. Prov- uh, there's a link to help you provide that information to help everybody out. Yeah, absolutely. If uh, any retailers are listening or any uh, readers that know their shop isn't online or, you know, whatever, like if you want your shop on our site, like just hit us up because we're trying to get everybody if we can but we've had to data mine it ourselves so it's been a big collective effort with lots of hours put into just finding information on shops so yeah and i actually know a local shop that's not on the list but i don't know if they're actually open at the moment if they're even doing like pickup or whatever so i'll have to call them and ask them so absolutely awesome Okay, great. Well, um, let's go ahead and move on. Let's talk about the book, because uh, that's why we're here. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm really excited to talk about it. Um, now, I need to let our listeners know, uh, we are in a very privileged situation being members of the Keek Network. Uh, <laughs> we have read issue two. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, be jealous, I know. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, we are going to do our best not to, exp- not to spoil uh, issue two. I will... Uh, before you okay. continue, I'll say uh, issue two is available digitally uh, at this point. Oh, cool. There um, you go. <laughs> it was it was too late to stop the presses on that, um, and the book is printed physically. I actually Val and I I think own like the only copies of it physically right now because the rest are sitting in Diamond's warehouse. Yay! <laughs> uh, but yeah, like the money and everything had already been put through for both comiXology and the print and so like yeah it came out digitally on comiXology so you can read it now these guys were privileged and got to read it weeks before it came out (laughs) yeah yeah so um so check it out and uh but first of course check out the first issue now as uh as he mentioned this there is the glitter cover it is still available on vaultcomics.com nice so pick it up it's a limited run uh and it'd be a great way to experience this book for the first time and uh you don't have to go directly you know to the store or anything like that at this point to get it you can order it online and then uh pick up another copy when the stores open back up so <laughs> um now let's talk about it because uh i we really enjoy this book um as i said we're big fans of vault so we're pretty much picking up every new series they're putting out mm-hmm. but this one really jumped out at me um i i the quality of, and I know um, you're the writer, but the first thing I have to brag about is the art. Uh, Val's art is incredible. Yeah, it is. And I like. I have no problem with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's been great from the get-go. He's really just kind of, he, he latched on. He liked the book and he got what I'm going for. And yeah, like, I mean, I think I've ever given him maybe personally, I've given him like, two notes <laughs> oh, and man. i think adrian's given him like five like his pages come in and they're just like oh yeah this is perfect like it's the scene oh. cool <laughs> yeah and like uh one thing that comes up a lot when i when i read comics when i review them and i talk to creators specifically the artists but i'll bring it up with you as well um the wardrobe mm-hmm. like if you're doing like a like a modern teenager story you got to get the wardrobe right. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you kind of look out of touch, you know? And I just love the wardrobe, like the little touches on the characters, like the, the cuffs on the jeans around the, the ankles. Yeah. And just like the design of the shoes and the fact that like, for the most part, if someone's wearing a jacket, pretty much everybody else in the background is wearing a jacket. Like there's no dis- disconnection between what is going on in the world. And uh, I, re- I realize that's the one thing that jumps out at me always is that. Um, and Josue, I remember you mentioned to me something about the uh, the jewelry. The Do you remember what I'm talking about? The earrings. Oh, fuck, I, I have earrings in front of me. But <laughs> keep going. Okay, so uh, 
you noticed the, the the earrings that she wore in issue two. Uh, never mind. We'll move on from that. No, that's uh, fine. Uh, I like talking about that because um, yeah. so like Val has done a ton of research for the modern fashion, which kind of luckily a lot of modern fashion is very nineties. Um, yeah. Uh, there's three characters introduced in issue two uh, that Val and I like to call the S squad Mm -hmm. um, because their names are uh, Sarah, Samantha, and Savannah. Perfect. Yeah. (laughs) They're based on real people. There's a family that I know. uh, It's my brother-in-law's best friend's family. Uh, All the women of which there are five, I believe uh, all their names start with an S and end with an A. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, their look is very, very, uh, like modernized, uh, I guess it's what's called e-girl fashion. And so Val watched like hours of TikTok to like do research for their outfits. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, he's done a lot of work, particularly on Sadie. She has different earrings and like a different outfit for every issue. Um, mm-hmm. and they're based on like these acrylic earrings and I love her earrings. Like I'm going to get a tattoo something when oh, like quarantine right. is over, mm-hmm. um, and four finger guns. And like, part of it is going to incorporate the earrings. So, yeah. Like but, she wears the alien earrings in the first one. And yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I really like that. And it's nice to know that that's the detail he went to because that totally makes sense from what, you know, everybody looks like. And I like the little accessories of things like earrings or him, you know, wearing his headphones mm-hmm. fairly yeah. constantly. <laughs> like, that's basically me. If anyone knows me in real life, I, I even have my headphones on my ears or around my neck. So <laughs> that's uh, another thing that'll be incorporated into the tattoo is Wes's <laughs> headphones. So, <laughs> and then that also leads me to, um, uh, on, on the Volt Comics website, they they have merch up, and um, mm. there is a T-shirt for Finger Guns. Yeah, that I really like a lot of the T-shirts on this site, and I'm going to order several. But this is my favorite of the T-shirts. Oh, thanks. Yeah, um, it's based on Val's uh, issue two cover, and mm-hmm. I love it. Um, yeah, I bought one for. Uh, me, my wife, and my son, we all got one. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great, guys. Check that one out. And uh, it's it's just really cool. And it'll look good on, like, because some, like, uh, licensed logos and stuff, like, kind of look forced on product. Not saying any of vaults, but I'm just saying in general. And this one just looks like an awesome T-shirt. It just looks <laughs> great on black, especially. So... Awesome. Um, all right. And so let's talk about the story. Now, you mentioned earlier that this was based on a dream that you had about um, basically using finger guns. And that's kind of the summary of this. And I remember when this was first announced and I went to our local store, Samurai Comics, shout out to them. And I was like, hey, I'd like to add uh, finger guns to my poll. And they're like, the, the girl behind the counter is great. She always helps me, but she she wasn't sure what I was talking about. I was like, oh, it's by Vault. It's coming out soon. I guess it had just been announced when I when I had asked for it, and it wasn't available yet. But um, hmm. I remember one of them, one of the people working there, was like, "What's it about?" And I'm like, "Well, as far as I understand, it's about kids with finger guns." <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and I always I'm like, "This is a very difficult comic to explain it is. to people." <laughs> and I was like, "So how do you pitch it to people? I want to hear your pitch." Sure. Um... <laughs> my elevator pitch has become two troubled teens like where two teens with troubled home lives discover that they can manipulate emotions using various finger guns. Nice. And uh, I usually finish it with uh, friendship and trouble ensue. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Okay. So pulling back the curtain, we've actually done this interview before, but we lost the copy. <laughs> so, <laughs> Was that there? Th- <laughs> so I'm glad you said that because you reminded me of something I wanted to talk about. We right. had this discussion last time and I love that we had this discussion. I want to have it again to you. It's important to state. This is a friendship. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, yeah. I've actually had some people either straight up ask me or kind of like point, like there was one fan 
he reached like tagged me on a tweet uh responding to somebody else talking about like hey not all characters need to like fall in love with each other and i was like i promise you that will not happen like this is a a friendship there's zero sexual tension between sadie and wes like you know there might be some moments where they hug or something but i promise you it's completely asexual i have no intentions of forcing love upon these two <laughs> they have bigger things to worry about exactly. <laughs> I, I honestly didn't see that coming out coming out like when i was reading it it's just like these are just two dudes or just two people just being friends like i didn't i didn't see like the ship and i'm and i'm one for like i'm always like looking out for the next one too but for this <laughs> one like I, it wasn't really there for me it was just like these two people just trying to like to figure the shit out together totally i'm glad that that, that it read that way that's how i tried very hard to focus on continuing to write it like, you know, I don't want to write anything that goes, hey, they're not going to make out or anything. But, like, I want it to, like, never give that vibe, too. And it's not always the easiest thing to get across. So I'm glad right. it is coming across well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you know what? I mean, that's part of, honestly, part of being a fan of something is looking for stuff like that. And obviously, we'd never look down on anybody for thinking, oh, that'd be great. Or oh, and, or even like the, quote, head canon, if you will, of somebody. Sure. That's fine. You know, believe what you want. And, you know, imagine that. And if that makes you happy, great. But the whole important thing is, is like, don't expect it to happen. <laughs> because that's the way you want it to happen. Yeah, and I think exactly. I think there's a lot of critical like analysis out there right now that is not based on the quality of something so much is based on what i wanted to happen did not happen and i'm very upset about that <laughs> right yeah i see that a lot too and yeah it can be frustrating sometimes yeah so i'm glad you're being upfront about it so we can tell the fans straight up hey it's not gonna happen enjoy the ride <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, <exactly>. yeah <laughs> so that's great um Another thing I wanted to bring up that we talked about last time is dogs. Dogs. Um, yeah. <laughs> several dogs in this book. Yeah. Uh, we've got and... some, good, some good pups. <laughs> so um, you're a dog person, I'm assuming. Yeah. I've got a couple. <laughs> a couple. And uh, did you base these dogs on yours or other people's dogs? or? Um, no. It's, the closest is... Um... So we have one recurring dog that you will see. His mm-hmm. name is Chester. And um, uh, he is not the same color, but uh, he's same basic uh, like breed of uh, Val's dog. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> His name is B-Dog, uh, which uh, they say stands for best dog. And uh, <laughs> he's pretty great if you follow Val on twitter or instagram uh, which he's at fishmas like fish christmas um, <laughs> <laughs> he is uh you'll see some pics of b-dog and like b-dog is like this i don't know he has this energy about him like he's a really happy looking dog but it's like a manic happy like he looks like he knows something that you don't <laughs> <laughs> i love i love b-dog and i've never met him in my life <laughs> that's awesome uh so and then if i remember correctly you have a dog that i adore <laughs> and yeah. follow on twitter <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah one of my two dogs well so they're they're themed together their names are hella and thor Fuck and yeah. uh <laughs> Thor is a, is a corgi so uh if you want to you can follow at mighty thorgi <laughs> on twitter and uh see some of his exploits from time to time he's it's 100 percent worth a follow for the record <laughs> yeah he's pretty he's pretty freaking adorable so <laughs> i remember there was a tweet a while ago that was just a picture of him being like stay safe in quarantine and i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty great so yeah, yeah i think that might be the last one i posted too i'm not like i'm not on it every day I just don't yeah. have time and energy for that. But uh, yeah, Thor, Thor knows you guys need to stay safe out there. <laughs> That's right. All right. So back to the book itself. Um, as you said, these are kids coming from homes that 
aren't the most stable, I guess would be the way I'd put it. Mm-hmm. And but but um, it's two completely different kinds of unstable homes. Yeah, yeah, I really... and I think I think that's really interesting that you that you you approach it that way because it's really easy to just you know use the cliche broken home or you know something like that, but like it's kind of ignoring the trauma of some kids, you know, like to just think that's what it is. So as soon as I got the idea behind both of their situations, I was, I was like, I really, really like this. I like the fact that we're looking at it like this and it will lead to interesting discussions between the two of them one day, I'm sure. Yeah. That's the hope. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I grew up in some troubled, you know, homes. Um, mm-hmm. My parents have been divorced since I was two. I had some abusive stepfathers, um, things like that. And then, and um, my uh, the way that Wes's home is troubled is is very different than what you might typically think of. And it's mostly just that, like, his dad is always at work, um, and so he's yeah. kind of kind of neglected. Like, you know, his dad still cares. His dad leaves him money for pizza things like that tells him he should go to bed, but like, you know, he does it through texts and notes and, you know, he's just not around. He's not always there. And I know that, you know, there's a lot of kids that are like that. And I kind of experienced it in high school. My parents, I was living at my dad's house and um, him and my stepmom both started working night shift. So they were just kind of never around and it was weird and not, always as cool as what everyone would think and so like i just thought that was a cool perspective to bring to it yeah definitely um and it's uh i I really like the book so far i like the potential of it um when uh, again we're trying not to spoil our issue too (laughs) but uh with it being available digital go go read it guys it's great um the potential of different finger guns uh-huh. Not just a basic, and well, we can spoil the first one. You you point a finger at someone and they get upset and angry, like irrationally angry. Uh-huh. But we discover that if you do it with two fingers, it has a different effect. And I like the potential for that and where that can go and the different things that they can find out. And uh, um, yeah, I just I'm just curious about that. Like, um, we are going to see more than two. I'm assuming we are. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll see more than two. Um, promise you, including I'll tell you, you'll see your next one in issue three. Ooh, uh, um, okay. So, and I don't, I don't know exactly when issue three is coming out and what the plan is for it. Um, you know, everybody's trying to figure everything out right now. So, uh, yeah, of course. Just for now, I guess all I can say really is like keep your eyes peeled for at least the digital release, um, possibly still a physical release, especially certain you know diamond and certain publishers are talking about shipping it by like either the end of april or the end of uh, may so Mm -hmm. hopefully we get to continue uh send this book out on a somewhat regular basis but anyway um yeah like that was kind of the you know uh, at least for the initial issue or two where you're seeing the two very polar opposite finger effects from the finger guns uh, of anger and calm is how uh, we usually refer to him in the scripts. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it was kind of a yin yang, you know, Sadie and Wes play off of each other and they come from different backgrounds and different homes. And so it all kind of just kind of works together pretty well. I've been pretty happy with it. Uh, I, yeah. I, what kind of came across? Uh, yeah. To kind of go off of that, I just want to add that like how I read it was um, if it was like by subconscious, basically by who these two people are, Wes being neglected at home, he kind of, he's becoming jaded. So it almost like a subconscious, like finger throw. And it's like, well, I just want to piss off the whole world too. Meanwhile, Mm -hmm. Sadie, she's so like, she's such a kind spirit that like, honestly, I feel like, well, from what we know, she really ultimately wants to be there for her mom. So it's Mm -hmm. like almost like she's subconsciously threw out like the other gun to just, if anything, for one person in the world, she just wants to make one person feel better. And I don't know, it just yeah. kind of says to like she's just such a um, a pessimistic optimist. That's why I love about <laughs> her. <laughs> she's a peacemaker. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot uh, that there's a lot of good reasons to like Sadie. She's very charismatic and very. I don't know. I just felt 
especially early on in the story as I was writing it, like I really gravitated towards liking Sadie a lot. Um, I don't know. She came really easy. She was really easy to write. And Wes, I had to figure out a little bit more. And maybe that's why he's a little more based on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like uh, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Uh, she's the way that the two play off of each other and the way that Sadie is just, you know, this, she has a deep care for her mom and, you know, like she's, she's a good friend. Yeah. She's a really good person. And you can see that, like, even though she has her own attitude, so to speak, um, she's, yeah, like she, I, I always refer to her as like the actual cool girl. Right. <laughs> like she's not the girl who's cool or popular because she wants to be. She just is because she's just a really cool person. Gotcha. Yeah. And what I think is interesting is, uh, and as Sway said, they kind of own their, uh, like that the one finger point is his and the two finger uh, point is hers. Other way, but, but yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, so they, um, if you look at the, the cover we were talking about that became the t-shirt mm-hmm. and the fact that they're both using different ones. And I just mm-hmm. thought that was kind of an interesting little detail that, you know, it wasn't just as simple as, Oh, they're both doing the finger gun, you know, like there's a little bit of detail in that, that they're doing. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of, I so like, you know, part of the reason that I'm sure I dreamt about using finger guns is because I do use them uh, from time to time. And I always use two fingers because, I don't know, that's just the way that feels right to me. And I know <laughs> that other people will only use one when they do it. And so, like, that was kind of like, oh, well, like, so, yeah, you have different ways of doing it that could do different things. So. <laughs> yeah, I put one, actually, now that I think about it. I'm doing two. Right. It's like, oh, it's not really my style. It's not my style. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do one as well. Your, but... your finger gun <laughs> will come to you. Naturally. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right. So, Josue, I want to open up to you. Did you have any questions at this time? Um, I just wanted to, like, I'm, I'm curious because, like, uh, yeah, we did, I did kind of bring this up last time too. Um, the music, like, will that be played out, play, play more into the story? Yes. In, to an extent, at least. Like, yeah. Um, music has become kind of, important to the story um like it, i didn't set out to do that mm-hmm. uh, but it just kind of has and val and i are both uh, musicians and who love music we have a lot of similar tastes um he probably goes a little bit more underground than i do okay. um but like you know we both love you know like punk and industrial and you know some metal and a lot of dip like we're both pretty eclectic aside from like I'm sorry if this offends anyone. I do not like country music, so <laughs> uh, I just can't do it. But anyway, um, yeah, so like Wes always listens to his headphones. You mentioned right. that. And um, between that and like, so we see him buying like an album in issue one, and there's lots of fun Easter eggs in that scene in the record store that Val snuck in there. And there's references to other artists and dance parties. And, you know, we have a lot of fun with music. It's kind of become a companion to the story. And so we did playlists to go along with it. There's two out right now on Spotify. If you look up like finger guns on Spotify, you can see our two playlists. Um, Yeah. The third playlist is coming hopefully soon. Nice. Val and I still have to make it. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. um, I I wanted to bring it up because like that that scene, the record store scene. Like, there's so many comics that that put the characters in a record store, but you, they just put the just small details of like just for the setting. But in your book, he, he, Val kind of goes out of his way to make the albums detail to make them recognize what like oh shit, I do know what that album is. Um, mm-hmm. And so I just I just really like that because. It's like it's something that you don't have to do, but then you do just for the sake of like that detail of like if you did like list if you do know the album, it's like oh shit, like he's picking up the talk, uh, talking heads as he's walking out, and like and you can just yeah. relate to West even more. Exactly. Um, 
but the the one where it stuck for me is like this is gonna be a special book for personally for me is like when he's introducing Val and he's like this album changed my life and it kind of did for me too and for like it was, the cover was just so obvious that it has to be Green Day American Idiot and yeah. I had listened to like so many albums before 2004 but for myself as well I think that was like the first time it actually a concept album actually clicked for me and what it was. Mm-hmm. And, and I and for and since then I kept defending American Idiot. It's like oh like that's when they went pop. It's like but I, I don't care. Like th- you're not listening to the story in the album. <laughs> I mean I always kept defending yeah. it. And I always just had to get to what's your name, and I love love that song so much. Yeah, that's one of my favorites too, and it it does suck that it's the last song on the album, but <laughs> um, but you know it's good as the last song on the album, and yeah, like that was a big album for me too. Um, uh, you know I had other loves before American Idiot but like that was kind of the similar of what you're saying of like a concept album and it came and and, like I did my research on like what the story was about and then I listened to it all over again and then I replayed it a bunch of times and I've watched like bad footage of the um the Broadway production and stuff like that yeah so yeah it's a it's a great album and like so yeah like that's kind of like where i say like wes is a lot like me you know he likes rock and punk and yeah i kind of talk through him sometimes oh awesome no yeah because i i just really appreciate like the that there's at least like a music element through like through the book yeah i think yeah like like i said i never like went out set out to do that but as a musician and a person who really really loves music in general like, I, I don't know, maybe it was inevitable. <laughs> I gotcha. All right. Well, um, everybody, we want you to go ahead and check out Finger Guns. Um, as he said, uh, issue two is available online. Uh, and keep out for the physical release once everything gets going. Uh, check out vaultcomics.com for all the merch and for the, uh, the exclusive cover we mentioned before. Uh, mm-hmm. Pick up the shirt. Uh, you'll wear it to a con. I'm sure uh, Justin will be really excited to see you in it. So absolutely. <laughs> Once we have cons again, that is. So yeah, uh, <laughs> when, whenever that is. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, anything else else you want to wrap up with? Um, nothing that comes to mind. Uh, I I would have. I'm, I'm trying my best not to bring up the issue out because I got the glittery one. And it's like there's only so many times I can take it out, and I'm pretty sure I'm running. It's running its course <laughs> before I can get it glittered. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, all right. Well, uh, again, thank you so much for working with us, Justin, and uh, showing up for the interview. We appreciate it. Uh, of course. Uh, Thanks for having me. Of oh, course. You. I'm a... <laughs> uh, you're always welcome. If you ever have anything to promote, you can always uh, reach out to us. I'm sure Thomas will be more than happy to hear from you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, check us out on geek-network.com. Um, and also check us out on all of our social medias at GN Podcasts. Uh, that is Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, also, uh, check out Justin at Emo Comic Writer on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And check out his adorable dog at Mighty Thorgy on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he, right. he, he, you might get more out of following that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Get some All adorable right. dog pics. <laughs> also and of course check out uh, creators for comics and seeing if there's anything you can do to contribute uh thank you everybody so much for joining us and um have a great week this has been a geek network production